Our security cameras caught Matthew vandalizing the church. Security cameras? The insurance company requires them. We're extremely disappointed in you, Matthew. This is very serious. Sit up, Matthew. The pastor's talking to you. Would you stop yelling at him, please? Yelling at him? I haven't started yelling at him. Maybe if you paid more attention to him and just tried talking to him. Oh, please. You're one to talk. You're never home, Miss. I want to get a job. Well, I have to get a job because Mr. Someone... Mrs. Stevenson, please. Now, I've spoken with the church deacons. We won't bring criminal charges under the condition the windows are replaced, and Matthew helps to fix what he destroyed. Better believe Matthew will help fix the church. I'll make sure of that. Oh, so now you want to play dad. Would you get off my back, please? Why are you always blaming everything on me? I'm getting sick and tired Jack, of hearing it. Jack, Rita, please. Matthew, would you mind stepping outside? I'd like a word with your parents. Don't you go far! Well, it appears the separation is taking its toll on everyone, especially Matthew. It's been really hard. Hard or not, vandalizing the church is unacceptable. Well, this is true. But you have to understand, Matthew sees his world as crumbling all around him. I think he's having real trouble coping. A lot of kids' parents get divorced. It's not an excuse to break the law. Mr. and Mrs. Stevenson, I didn't ask Matthew to step out to talk about him. What do you mean? I wanted to talk about what's going on in your lives, you know, with the divorce. I thought we were here to talk about what my son did to the church. I took time off of work for this. Oh, once again, Jack, it is all about you. Well, yeah, maybe I do, it... Jack, I do want to talk about that. But have you both thought about this divorce? Have you prayed about it? I don't think that prayer can save this marriage, Pastor. Oh, never underestimate the power of prayer, Jack. But, I mean, have you prayed together? We don't go to church anymore, Pastor. Well, couples need more than just going to church together. They need to work on building a marriage that's based on a foundation of equally turning themselves over to the Lord. Pastor, I'm not here for a counseling session. All right, so if you don't want to talk to Matthew, I need to get back to work. You know how busy we are. Well, how are our plans on the new Sunday school coming? Great. We should go over them later today. Sure, sure. Oh, I'll make sure Matthew comes by every day to help out with the repairs.
cares more about his job than his own son. I'm going to pray for your family, Rita. <laughs> Thanks. gentlemen pastor we've been doing some calculations and if you want the sunday school finished by winter we need to get the car beams and trim no later than october 30 and that only gives us four weeks to complete construction we're concerned mr otto won't be able to deliver the wood on time well ernest carved the originals and i think we're lucky to still have him around i know since his wife passed away last year he's been a little reclusive but as long as i've known ernest he never missed a deadline well look I know the man is a legend, and I know you want the Sunday school and the church to look the same. But if we don't get that wood on time, we're not going to finish this project till next spring. We do have a backup plan. Uh, what is that? Well, we replace the carved beams with standard beams, and all the molding and trim with new plastic trim. Now, it's all termite proof, weather proof, and comes prefabricated. Prefabricated? It just doesn't seem right. We've already started the foundation. Can we just say that if the wood isn't here on time, we'll have the prefab stuff ready to go? Let's hope old Ernest can come through with it. I'll get him on it. All right. Thank you, sir. Ernest. Pastor. Haven't seen you in town for a while. Well, haven't been in town for a while. What happened to my wood? Oh, vandalism. Can you imagine? No. So what do you think? Can you replace it? I don't think so. Uh, no one else can match that detail. And no one else includes me. We all miss Christine. I just don't care anymore. Have you prayed about it? Prayed for guidance? Never underestimate the power of prayer. Sound just like her, Pastor. She was truly a woman of great faith. <sighs> Even in her final days when her body was riddled with cancer, she still believed the Lord would save her. I even bought into it myself, prayed with her every day. Begged the Lord not to take her, but he didn't listen. Took her anyway. But she prayed for the Lord to save her. And I believe with all my heart, the Lord answered her prayer. Answered? Have you taken a look into the cemetery lately, Pastor? Well, Christine understood that Eternal salvation is of far greater importance than that of simply healing one's body. The Lord answered her prayer earnest and brought her home. What was the first piece of wood you ever carved? Do you remember? That was a plaque for Sunday school. I was about eight or nine years old. You remember what it said? I do. WWJD. What would Jesus do? Sounds like pretty good advice. And by the way, that plaque still hangs at the Sunday school. Well, this is the knife I used to carve it. Good day, sir. What can I do for you? 
Jack Stevenson. I'm building a Sunday school over there at the church. Oh, so I heard, yeah. I got some good news for you. Letter of assignment. Letter of, uh, what is that? That releases you from your contract and assigns all obligations and liabilities over to my boss and I. Oh, you're talking about the wood? Yeah, if you sign it, you're not liable for holding up the project. You said not liable for the... We're bailing you out. No one carves wood for construction anymore, Mr. Otto. It's all done by machines. It's called prefabrication. Oh, uh, that's what they're calling it, huh? Yeah, I got a pen right here for you. I'm going to read it first, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, I'll be doing that later. Fair enough. You know, Mr. Otto, you shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth. I'll come by tomorrow. What's this? I'm getting a tattoo. I'm trying the design out. <laughs> no way. What's the big deal? It's just a tattoo. While you're having dinner with your father tonight, you can ask him about a tattoo. Then, Matthew. Oh, yeah. Dad called yesterday. You didn't tell me that. What did he say? He said he can't make it tonight. What? Big surprise. Mommy blew us off again. Well, did he say why? I mean, why didn't he call me? I don't know. He made plans or something. Maddie, I gotta work late tonight. I'm not gonna be home until after 7.30. Um, well, remember, you have to work at the church today. And there are hot dogs in the freezer. And no tattoos. It's called wood. It's not just wood, it's maple. Some foolish person broke into pieces. What are you looking at? Just discovered something. Here, come here. You see this grain, how beautiful it is? It's called flame and quilt. Now, that only happens randomly in individual trees. You don't discover it until after you saw in the wood. It's just a piece of broken wood. Not just a broken piece of wood, it's hardwood maple. So what a choice for bowling pins, guitars, pull cues, even baseball bats. Baseball bats, huh? Yeah, most big league sluggers. Boom! Use maple bats. Why are you telling me this? Because it's my wood. What do you mean yours? I carved it. All of it. Are you the one that's going to make the wood? Lord makes the wood. I just carve it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Flaming quilt, huh? Yeah, flaming quilt. You want to see what I can do with wood? Come up to my place. Where do you live? Up on Douglas, next to the horse farm. You know where it is? Yeah. Good. 
It doesn't mean I'm coming. That's entirely up to you. Mr. Stevenson? Ernest? Have that lighter for me? Oh, yeah. Great. <sighs> uh, you need to sign this, Ernest. Hello, my friend. I, I don't have to sign anything. All the beams and trim in what? Less than a month? You can't possibly do that. Well, I've been carving wood now since before you were born. That's exactly my point. And again, it's my problem, not yours, huh? No, it's my problem. I got a church to fix and a Sunday school to build. If I don't, I don't get paid till next year. How about this? You start building, and I'll get you the wood. If you don't? Well, if I don't, then I guess I'll be in default. You can go ahead and start using all that prefab stuff you like so much. Need to sign this, Ernest. You'll never get it done. Shouldn't you be at school? I quit. This is how we make lumber out of timber. Come here, give me a hand, will you? Shove that saw horse underneath it, will you? Yeah, it's been done like this for thousands of years. Thousands? Yeah, thousands. The Indians used to carve their own fish hooks and pipe stems. Polynesians, they'd carve these really intricate patterns into their paddles. Yeah, but thousands. Thousands. Jesus carved wood. He was a carpenter. Jesus, huh? Yeah, our savior was a wood carver. You, uh... You got any interest in doing something this old? Sure. Hmm. Step into my office. I want to show you something. These are the tools of the trade. This is a carving knife. Used for paring, cutting, smooth edges. This is a gouge. It's got a curved edge here for Carving hollows and rounds of the curves in the wood. This here's the chisel, straight, see? It's used for flat surfaces mostly, or creating a line for an inlay. This is the V tool that emphasizes your lines for you, gives it a 3D effect. And this is the veiner, yeah, it creates deep gouges. How'd you learn so much about carving wood? 
Well, that's what I do. I've been doing it for a long time. Say, what is it that you do now that you quit school? I'm not sure yet. I'm thinking about joining the military. I just need to get away from my parents. Hmm. Well, you know, joining the military is a, that's a very honorable and noble thing to do, but I'm not quite so sure I'd uh, join just to get away from my parents. Well, I gotta do something. I can't take them anymore, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, tell me, kid, why'd you try to destroy the church? How'd you know it was me? Well, it's a small town. <laughs> Come on, word gets around. Do you want me to leave? Nah, I've made enough mistakes in my life. Things I'm not proud of. You know, everybody makes mistakes. The key to that is how you make them right. So how can I fix what I did? Well, you can ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness from the pastor? Or from you? Well, asking the pastor for forgiveness is a good place to start, sure. But I was thinking more of uh, asking the Lord for forgiveness. You mean pray? Yeah. I've prayed before. Never works. Listen, kid. Got an idea. Why don't uh, you and I work together and fix that church up, huh? I could use the help. Well, I'm supposed to, but what could I do? I, I don't know about anything about carving wood. Well, but I do. You know, now that I got a little bit of a hitch in my giddy up. I could sure use the help humping around those big pieces of timber. What do you say? I can do that. Okay. Step over here. Take the strap off the block for me, will you? It should just take a lot more time than I thought. Hey, um, my dad works at Sandstone. He's in charge of building the Sunday school. I know, I recognize the last name. He doesn't want you to make the wood. He doesn't think you can. <laughs> he told me as much. Well, how much do you have to make? Four carved beams and all the trim by the end of October. Can you do it? <laughs> well, with two men working, you bet I can. Matthew! What are you doing here? <laughs> working, Dad. You're supposed to be working at the church. Well, pa Pastor Clark told me to help Mr. Otto. I told the pastor you'd be working at the church, not here. Get home. Don't butt me, Matthew. Home. Now. Matthew, home! You knew he was my son? I did. You know, I quit school, vandalized the church, broke the windows, cost me a fortune? I did. I don't want him working here. But it was my wood he damaged. 
And the right thing would be for him to own up to it and work to make it right. You don't tell me how to raise my boy. I wouldn't dream of it. You're doing one heck of a job yourself. All right. I don't want him involved in this. We want to give you 80 cents on the dollar to take over your contract. 80 cents on the dollar don't have to work. Whew, sounds great. No thanks. My boss is willing to go as high as a buck. And that's without you delivering one piece of wood. Again, sounds like a great deal, but uh, I'll have to pass. Ernest, it's free money. Why don't you just take it? Well, I know it sounds foolish, but over the years, I've been accustomed to getting paid for doing a job and cashing a check for doing nothing just doesn't seem right. <clears throat> I'm offering you a way out here, Ernest. I suggest you take it. I uh, hear that loud and clear, and I'm declining your offer. All right, suit yourself. My son does not work here. And you keep him out of this, do you understand me? Ah, dear Lord. falling apart without me. Unbelievable. Where is he? In his room. Matthew, get down here. Now! Tell you what happened? Yes. And? And what? It's no big deal to you? You know, I had plans the other night. You were supposed to take your son out to dinner. Plans? Oh, right. Right. Uh, beauty parlor, yoga. What else? Boyfriend? That's really none of your business. It is my business. We're not divorced yet. Just stop it! Your days of telling me what to do are over! Everybody looks at this place, someone needs to tell you what to do. Well, it is not gonna be you. It's fine with me. We need to talk to you. Sit. We need to talk to you about quitting school. <laughs> you guys are gonna play parents now, huh? Hey, do not take that tone of voice with what us. What tone? Don't talk to your mother like that. Like what? Like you do? Oh, well, Jack, he's got you there. Enough! We're here to talk about you, young man. Why were you at Mr. Otto's house? Pastor Clark told me to help him. Pastor Clark told you you had to fix what you destroyed. That's why he sent me there. He's carving the wood for the church. No, he's not. Sandstone's doing it or we don't get paid. Jack, will you just stop it? Stop involving him in your work problems. He involved himself when he took a baseball bat to the church. Maybe if you'd been around a little bit more. Don't start with me. Don't start with you? No, guys! Fine! I don't want to work there anyway. Good. Because you're not going to. Fine! Matthew! Are you happy? Look what you did. What I did? All I did was tell him I didn't want him to work for Mr. Otto. What's the big deal? We told the pastor that he would help fix the church. What's the big deal? The man has taken money out of our pockets. What do you think pays for all this? You're unbelievable. I'm unbelievable. I don't think you can make it, Jerry. 
Uh, he better not make it. We've got other church bids coming in. I don't want anybody asking for Otto's wood. You know, this is all about the partnership we were talking about. I'm going to have the beams and the decorative trim all ready to go. The minute he doesn't deliver, nobody's going to give us any problem about starting with ours. Agreed. And he's not going to deliver, Jack. I can promise you that. Pastor Clark, he said I'd help you. I see. Huh. So, what's with the backpack? I can't live with my mom and my dad anymore. And uh, where are you going to live? I've got to call your parents. You guys can't stop me from running away. I don't want to live with either of you. Where are you going to live? I don't care. Anywhere but with you. Matthew, we were worried. Mom, I can take care of myself. Really? How are you going to feed yourself, huh? How are you going to get a job? Find a place to live! I don't know! <laughs> I don't know. All I know is I don't want to live with you. Or with you, Mom. Listen, mister, I want to be on my own. This is none of my business. You're right, it's not. Jack. I can appreciate that, Mr. Stevenson. I'm not about to tell anybody how to raise their child. But if your boy needs a place to stay to clear his head, then he can stay here with me. Lord knows I can use the company. <sighs> can I, Mom? Well, you're not actually considering this, are you? Matthew, I am telling you right now. Let's forget it. Forget it! Stay right there. What am I going to do with him? I want to throw him in the back of the truck. I know. But right now, I think he just needs a little space. His whole world's being turned upside down. I know. But I don't think us turning our son over to Ernest Otto is the answer. We're not turning him over to anyone. I just think he needs a break. This is your week with him. If you're comfortable with him, with Ernest. Jack, I really don't see how a couple of days could hurt. Just make sure it's a couple of days, OK? Morning. Morning. Uh, a little early 
ready for you, huh? Yeah. Last time I got this early, let's go fishing with my dad. Yeah, yeah. Now listen, if you're gonna stay here, I want you to make me a simple promise, okay? Yeah, sure is it. Before you do anything, I need you to ask yourself a question. Question? Yeah. WWJD. What's that? Well, it's short for what would Jesus do? Jesus? Yeah, before you make any choice or decision, I just want you to ask yourself that simple question. What would Jesus do? That's all. See, Jesus came down to earth to set an example for us. I thought he came down to, like, die for us or something. Oh, yeah, that too, but... But he also came down to sort of, uh, show us the way. Okay. All right, well, let's see. Um, do you think Jesus would have quit school? They didn't have schools back when Jesus lived. <laughs> well, all right. Do you think Jesus would have vandalized the church? No. There you go. See how it works? Yeah. All right. All I'm asking you to do is to consider that before you take any course of action, anytime, anywhere, anytime in your life. Just ask that simple question. What would Jesus do? That's all. Okay. So you don't like that stuff, huh? No. It's no good. Yeah, try not to eat through the enamel. <laughs> Let's see. Put it right up here. Okay, watch your fingers. There you go. Now that's nice. See how the grain is nice and tight? The way it flows would be perfect for the wood trim. And it's got that nice honey colored hue as well. Um, let's put it on the bench. How are you going to make all the spaces so perfectly spaced apart? Well, I use my fingers and. I've also been doing this since I was in diapers. Really? <laughs> no, not really. I was uh, I was 15 years old when I started. Wow. Grab me a couple of clamps, would you? You started to work at 15. Yeah. Yeah, my folks passed away and left me this house and a crop of maple and myrtle trees. You were alone at 15? Yeah, I sure was. It's insane. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. almost 16. Now I want to be on my own. Well, hey, you know, times were a lot different back then. People just grew up a lot faster. I don't want you to think it was easy for me. It wasn't. It was pretty tough. If it wasn't for Christine, I probably wouldn't have made it. Who's Christine? She was my wife. Yeah, she was the one who talked me into taking my father's trees, carving them, and selling them myself. Yeah, she was always right about stuff like that. Okay, let's get back to work here. Start at the end. Playing it smooth. Here, Ernest. I know something Jesus would do. Yeah? What's that? If you'd quit school, you'd definitely go back. I do believe you're right. You're the one that's not listening to me. You keep saying the same thing over and over, but it's not going to change anything. Would you stop talking back to me? Matthew, listen to me. You have to come no, home. No, Mom, I'm staying right here. You can't stay here forever. This isn't your Mom, home. Mom, it's more of a home than I've had in a while. 
Why are you doing this to me? Mom, it's not about you. It's about me and what I need. What do you need? I don't want to live in your house. I don't want to live in Dad's house. I'm happy here. What you need to do, young man, is to come home and be with your family. What family, Mom? Meth. Oh, you know what? No. He's doing his schoolwork? He has to. It's part of his promise. Promise? Yeah. Matthew and I came to an agreement. A contract of sorts that he has to abide by in order to stay here. Oh. Keeping up with his schoolwork is part of the deal. Where to get those books? Oh, those are my wife's books. She was a teacher. Oh, I remember your wife. You were married a long time, weren't you? Yeah, seems like a day to me, but uh, yeah, over 40 years. That time with Christine, the best years of my life. I wish I had a marriage like that. No problems, always getting along, happiness. <laughs> <laughs> no problems, no fights. Even if you're in the perfect marriage, there's always going to be bumps. And we had our fair share. But you both got through them. How? Well, Christine and I had something that many couples don't have. What's that? Uh, Lord. We turned our lives, our marriage, everything over to Jesus. We put ourselves in his hands. You're saying the Lord helped you with your marriage? Well, he showed us the way through his example, his teaching, his word. What example? Jesus wasn't even married. His example of kindness, of understanding, most importantly, sacrifice. And his word? Word was the Bible. How can the Bible help me with my marriage? That thing was written over 2,000 years ago. Hey, Mr. Otto. I need help with a question. Why don't you go back inside? I'll be in in a minute. I'm just saying goodnight to your mom. Good night, Mom. I love you, Maddie. I love you, too. He wants to stay. Well, kid just needs some space. But I promise you, as soon as he's ready, I'll give him the heave ho. Well, um, thank you for taking care of my son and for being so understanding. Mrs. Stevenson, Christine and I made it through. 40 plus years because we had balance. By balance, you mean you and your wife were equally in charge? <laughs> no, our marriage had balance, but uh, Christ was the head of our family. Good night, Mr. Otto. Good night, Mrs. Stevenson. Still need help with the question? No, I'm not. Good man.
Honey? Who is that? Dr. Anavi. The specialist? What, what do you want? The test was positive for cancer, Ernest. It's called a blastoma. He said most patients die within months. Oh, this guy, this guy's be some mistake. There's no way. Oh, Lord. No, no, no mistake. No mistake, Ernest. I am sorry. Oh, sweet Christine. I prayed so hard. First my boy, no. Honey, honey, the Lord has a plan for all of us. <gasps> oh, <wow. What are you doing? Artist, what are you doing? What? What are you doing? I'm making lumber out of timber so I can cut some wood. Yeah, but what's the point? We don't have time. Oh, well, we're going to have to find some more time. How? Well, you can start by stacking these up on the bench for me. Oh, son. You've only got two choices. You can either lend a hand or get out of the way. Now, I'm pretty sure I know which choice Jesus would make. Excuse me. Can I have a word? Yeah, sure. We lost a lot of the lumber in a fire. Fire? What fire? Where's Matthew? Matthew's fine. Most of the wood we carved got lost, and we're going to need some time to carve some more. How'd the fire start? I don't know. Matthew didn't. No, it wasn't Matthew. Look, Mr. Stevenson, I just need a few more days. 
I can't help you out. Look, in a few days, I can get you the entire load. In the meantime, I can get you enough wood to get started. I can still offer you a release to get out of the contract, all right? That's it. Uh, hey, I'll get you your wood. You'll never get it done. Uh, we'll see about that, huh? How'd you get him to go back to school? Well, he promised me he would do what Jesus would do. We decided that Jesus wouldn't quit school. Jesus? He hated church. Remember, he took a baseball bat to one? Uh, he doesn't hate church. Disappointed in church. Disappointed in the Lord. He thinks he got betrayed, let down. How was he betrayed? Well, he prayed that his parents wouldn't uh, get a divorce. He told you that? Yeah, he told me that. He used to go to church every Sunday, I mean. Then Jerry offered me, you know, more money to partner with him in the construction business, and Rita got busy, and the church took a back seat. Next thing you know, I'm on my way to a divorce. Well, the times you did go to church, Matthew apparently learned that through Christ, families stay together, and now he feels betrayed. Rita and I getting a divorce has nothing to do with my son, all right? I love my son, Ernie. I'm sure you do, but I'm not the one you should be telling this to. Mom and Dad will ever get back together. Have you prayed about it? I said I prayed they'd get back together. I'd be happy like you and your wife were. That'd be nice. Yeah. I wish it could have met her. You want to? What? Meet my wife, Christine. Christine, honey, this is the boy that's been staying at the house helping carve the wood for your Sunday school. She's not actually here, is she? No, she's in my heart. But. She's really with the Lord. But you talk to her? That's my way of feeling close. I'm remembering her. Does she talk back to you? I hear her voice sometimes, sure, but that's uh, from my memories. She's in a better place now. What are we gonna do? About what? Well, we lost all those days. Well, the only thing we can do is roll up our sleeves and get back to work. Do you think someone we know started the fire? I don't know what to think about that. Well, why don't you call the police or something? Filled out a police report, but there's nothing they can do. I'm going to my mom's. I'll talk to you later. All right. Hi, Mom. Hi. Uh, how are you? I'm fine, Mom. Just...
what are you doing in here? Is everything okay at Mr. Otto's? It's fine. You don't look fine. We had a fire that burned all our wood. I know. Mr. Otto called me to let me know you're all right. Mom, do you... I was just... What is it? Nothing. Matthew! Tell me what's bothering you. Um... Do you think Dad started the fire? No. <sighs> Why do you think that? Mr. Otto asked him for a few more days and he said no. Oh, Maddie. <laughs> Honey, your father has his issues. But at heart, he is an honest and a decent man. Up your coat, it's cold. Mom, we're not gonna make it in time. What do you mean? Sit down. I mean, we're not gonna make enough wood by the deadline. We need help. Well, I'm sure Pastor Clark will understand. We could do it if we had help. Okay, but who? <laughs> your father's not gonna help. Well, you could help us? Me. Yeah, you, Mom. <laughs> Matthew, don't be silly. I don't know anything about wood carving. Well, neither did I, but, but Mr. Otto's a great teacher. He could teach you. I, I, I've just started a new job. I, I, I can't go to work in a lumber yard. I mean, you won't. Patty, I got bills to pay. Responsibilities, commitments. I'm sorry, I know that's not what you want to hear, but that's the way life is. You're gonna have to tell Mr. Otto to find someone else. So Otto wasn't asking, Mom. I was. Matthew, you're asking me for something I can't give. Can I ask you something else then? Sure. WWJD. WWJD. What would Jesus do? Mr. Otto taught it to me. The question doesn't work for everything. Why not? Because you are asking me to go to my new boss and tell him I can't start my job because I'm going to carve wood for Ernest Otto. It's... Okay. Okay. You really think we could pull us off? Uh, never underestimate the power of belief combined with hard work. <laughs> well, let's ask the Lord for, let's say, 10 more guys. Well, why don't you ask him for 20? I was only kidding. So was I. <laughs> hey, it's your mom. Hi. Hi. I, uh... I spoke to my new boss, told him I wouldn't be able to start work until next week. He let you? No. I was fired. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Need help? Well, Matthew, come on, show your mom what to do. Come on, Mom. Thanks. Matthew.
well. Looks good. Smells good. And could use a little bit more pepper. Oh, no, 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 no. No more pepper. What do you mean, no more pepper? Do you have any idea how many times I've made that? I guarantee you it needs more salt. No, no. Let me see how you ruined it now. Oh, okay. Well, all right. All right. Well, I'm gonna have to show you how to make my chicken noodle soup soon, then. Yeah, maybe tomorrow. All right. All right. Hey. Hey, uh, So, what can I do? Set the table? Sure. Um, silverware's in that drawer right next to the dishwasher. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Did you and your son ever cook together? Well, no, not really. Well, now, who could that be? Hey, Ernest. Hey, what can I do for you? Uh, I just came by to talk to you about your contract. Oh, uh, I got the extension? No, I asked my boss, but he wouldn't budge. But he's still willing to buy you out so you won't lose any money. Thanks for the effort. No problem. Actually, we're just about to sit down and have some dinner. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was dinner time. No, no, I mean, are you hungry? You want to join us? I don't want to impose. Ah, come on. No imposition. We've got plenty. Follow me. Thanks. I'll ask Rita to throw out another plate. Rita? Rita, would you set an extra place, please? Sure. Jack stopped by to talk about the contract, but I'm starving, so I thought we'd have dinner first. I'll get it, Mom. OK. Something sure smells good. I'll set you a place. Sure. I mean, what's my dad doing here? I'll never underestimate the power of prayer. Here. I did bake sales, I was a cab counselor, and then I joined the choir. You were in a choir? Mm -hmm. hmm. That's how Jack and I met, actually, in the church choir. You were in a choir? Can't picture you singing. I can't. I only joined to meet Rita. And they figured out I couldn't sing. <laughs> did they kick you out, Dad? Sort of. They asked me if I wanted to be an usher. <laughs> <laughs> that was okay, though. By then, I'd already met my wife. Well, you were very good at helping the little old ladies to their seat. Yeah, that was a very important job. Oh. <laughs> very cute old ladies. There you go. Thank you. We haven't had dinner together in a long time. <laughs> yeah. Those two can cook. Yeah, they work well together. Yeah, they do. Rita, you do realize that if Ernie delivers the wood in time, I lose a partnership. Jack, some things you do because it's the right thing. Like help Ernie cut wood? You know about that. Matthew told me. <sighs> How's your coffee? It's good. Well, Matthew made it. Our son made coffee? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Drifted apart. Everything made sense before. By before, do you mean when we stopped following the Lord, turning our family over to Him? Rita, I, I don't want to talk about this right now. Jack, you never want to talk about anything. 
I'm just saying, I think our marital problems started when we walked away from God. Saved by the bell. Hey, buddy. Hey. You guys aren't fighting again, are you? No. <laughs> no. It... Talking. Just talking. Sit down. What's going on? I have a question, then. Ask away. You know we had a fire here, right? Yeah, I heard. What is this, son? Just wondering. Do you know anything about that? What do you mean, son? I mean... Do you know what started the fire? Why would I know about that? Matthew, your father would never be a part of something like that. Oh, my God. Of course not. I love you, Maddie. You got to know that. I never do anything to hurt you. Do you understand? Good day's work, don't you think? Yeah. How long do you think it's gonna take us to finish? Um, about a week. My hearing's pretty soon. Oh yeah, yeah, school, huh? What are you gonna tell them? They don't want to go back to school. That's it? You're gonna have to give them something more than that, don't you think? Like what? Well, are you remorseful? Okay. Well, tell them that. Have you changed? Yeah. Well, there you go again. You can tell them you're remorseful, that you've changed. Like I want to do what Jesus would do. You know, get educated, make my family proud. Yeah. Yeah. What about wanting to do it for yourself? I wish you could be there with me. Well, you're going to have to handle this one on your own, kid. You don't want to come back to school, Matthew. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. I'm looking for a change in your behavior, Matthew. Uh, quite frankly, I haven't seen any. Writing graffiti, breaking windows at the church. I just don't think you've earned the right to come back. WWJD. What did you just say, young man? I said WWJD. It stands for what would Jesus do? Yeah, I know what it stands for. What does it have to do with you? Well, it's something that Mr. Otto taught me. It's what I ask myself now before I make a decision. Uh, Mr. Otto, oh, you mean Ernest Otto? Yes, sir. Matthew's been living with Ernest Otto for the past few weeks. He's been helping him carve wood for the Sunday school. Well, Ernest is a good man. But I'm not impressed with the fact he had to help fix the windows he vandalized. He wanted to help. I gave him a chance to quit. He didn't. And we are both very proud of our son. Mr. and Mrs. Stevenson, I think it's very positive that you're both here for your son. But I have a whole school full of children to think about. What kind of a, 
a message would I be sending to... Sorry to barge in on you all. Uh, Mr. Otto. Uh, please, come in. I was, I was hoping I could say something. Um, well, go ahead. Oh, I understand that Matthew has been living with you. Oh, well, yeah, he has. He's also been helping me carve wood for the church. Is it not true, Mr. Otto, that Matthew is helping to repair the church as a condition imposed on him by Pastor Clark? Oh, yeah, I'm sure that's, that's the way it was at first, but I, I began to see a real change in Matthew. I think he just needed some time away from home to think things through. Now, this report says that Matthew ran away from home. So, on top of everything, he's a runaway. No, we let Matthew stay with Mr. Otto. A decision as incredibly important as not letting him back into high school requires a lot of time and reflection on behalf of the decision maker. I concur. And I have given this a great deal of thought. It is with a heavy heart that I make this decision. Matthew. I recall a, a young high school guy that once left the water running on purpose in the boys' room. Flooded the whole second floor, if I remember correctly. Even leaked down to the first floor. It cost the school thousands of dollars. I don't know what that has to do with this. The principal at the time was a Mr. Theodore Folia. It's my wife's father. We're talking about Matthew this afternoon. Yeah, that boy got a second chance. And because of that chance, that, that young man went on to really make something of himself. Went on to become principal of the school. So, Tom, don't you think Matthew deserves the same chance you got? Mr. Stark? If he is late, and I don't care if it's by five minutes, we go ahead with our wood. Jack, you listening? Jack. Yeah? The pastor will see the Sunday school going up. Everything will be on schedule. You'll be happy. Hey, what is the matter with you today? Gonna take a few days off. <laughs> Are you nuts? Not anymore. Something's more important than this job. What on earth could be more important than this job right now? My family, my wife, my son. Your family? I thought you were getting divorced. Not if I can help it. So you're just walking away? Looks that way. Do you realize how many people would love to be in your shoes right now? I am offering you a 50% ownership in this company. I appreciate your offer and the opportunity, I really do. But the Lord has a plan for me. My family needs me. And if that means losing this partnership, so be it. Well, this partnership just went up in flames, just like Otto's would. What did you just say? <laughs> See these edges here? Gotta sand them to the round. So it sheds water. Did you teach your son this stuff? Oh, yeah. Did Josh ever want to run away from home? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. Like me, huh? Yeah. A few months before he died, we just couldn't get along, so, uh, you yeah. know, he knew everything, I knew everything. All we did was argue, and yeah, yeah, he ran away. Where did he go? Joined the army. Less than a year later, he died. Biggest mistake I ever made, let him run away like that. 
I never got to say goodbye. I never got to say I'm sorry. I wasn't there when he needed me most. At least you know he needed you. Yeah. Yeah, well, all sons need their father. And all fathers need their sons. Well, I never forgave myself, and I'm pretty sure I never will. Great. Thanks. So how much longer till the sun comes up? Oh, it's only, what, 2.30 in the morning? Lots of time. You want some coffee? Uh, I'm good. Hey. I don't remember seeing him being so committed to something before. It's all right. It's okay. It's not the first time I've stuck myself with a chisel. I, I, I think that she's right, Ernest. We, we gotta get you to a hospital. Oh, no, I didn't hit an artery or a tendon. I'll, I'll survive. Ernest, please. I'm good. I'm good. Go back to work. Yeah. We're fine. It's. You okay? Sorry. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, it's all right, man. Yes, I'm sorry. Let's grab that first aid kit, will you? Come on. Well, that's all the carving I'm going to do. Let's close it up. We can keep working while you rest. Much obliged. Yeah, Ernie, go get some rest and uh, we'll keep rolling here. I know you will. It's ready to go. Okay. Dad, come on out with us. Okay. One sec. What are we doing? Get up, pull this around, and I'll cover the block, okay? All right. Like this. Yeah, pull tight. Pull this down, I guess? Yeah. yeah. Get up. All right. Now what? Hold up. Too old for this, Matty. You can do this? Yeah. All right. There we go, buddy. <laughs> Yo, watch it. Just watch it. <laughs> All right, go. Lift it. Whoa. I guess my son just uh, showed me up. Yes, I think he did. Good job. Huh? Yeah. See you, miss? He's earning it. <laughs> All right, Ernest, no problem. There we go. Good job. <laughs> Oh, this is the uh, prefabricated wood, is That's it? That's right. Yes, sir, it is. And uh, we're just about out of time, so... Well, 
I guess you have to do what you have to do. Yes, I guess we do. Uh, I think you're going to be pleased with the price. Pleasure to see you guys. Master. Ernest, what happened with your leg? Oh, occupational hazard. I want to show you something. Carved this out of myrtle wood, just like the one I carved for you 40 years ago. Well, amen to that, Ernest. Hey, hey, hey. I want a lawyer. Jerry's the one who started the fire at your shop. He wanted to sign a deal with a prefab company and was offering him larger contracts and more money. Well, how did the police find out? He admitted it. I turned him in. Dad, you called the police? Yes, son, I did. But if Mr. Sandstone goes to jail, you won't have a job. Well, I've got some work coming up. I can uh, use some help. I'd be honored. Welcome aboard. I do need someone to finish the Sunday school. Are you both available? Just finished the job, Bernie. Yeah, my schedule happens to be clear. <laughs> Good. Mrs. Stevenson, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm happy for you two. You belong together. Got some work to do. Yeah. Christine and I worked it for 40 years. We'll be okay. Well, I know exactly where this goes, but uh, I'm gonna need some help, Jack. Sure, buddy. Love you. Love you, Mom. Thank you, Ernest. Matthew. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to come by and visit if that's all right. I look forward to it. And uh, when you do, I'll show you how this works. Thank you. Thank you. Got you some irises. It's gonna be a beautiful day. Oh. Turns out that you were right. I'm not done working. Seems there's plenty of people that still like a Woodcarver around. Should have known you'd be right about that. I think I'll stick around here for a bit. You got a ladybug on your tombstone. Means you're going to be coming into some money. I sure miss you. 
time with you so much.